Electrostatics, example of a uniform infinite line charge. We can make our life a lot easier if we borrow the results from our previous example where we derived the total charge and the total field around a finite line, line charge. And so I'm summarizing all of that here. We found the total charge to be the charge density times the length of the line. And we found this big expression for the total electric flux density. And we observed that it had a one over rho dependence. So as, the, as we walk away from our line charge, the magnitude of the D field decays with one over rho. Given these results for the finite line charge, we can very easily figure out what happens for the infinite line charge, and we don't have to repeat all of that work. So first, what is the total charge on this infinitely long line? Well, the result we got from the finite line charge is that it's the charge density times the length of the line. However, the length of our line is infinite. That actually makes the total charge of an infinite line charge infinite, assuming that the charge density is uniform. If that were not uniform and that charge density decayed near the ends of the lines in some way, we could still have a finite total charge and not infinite. But as long as the charge density is uniform, the total charge will be infinite. So what's the total D field? Well, if our line becomes infinite, let's think about what happens to phi1 and phi2. What values do we use for those? So if our line is infinite, that means ZA will extend down, 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 super far. And what we can see is that this phi1 becomes 90 degrees in the limit as our ZA goes to negative infinity. So phi1 is 90 degrees for an infinite line. What about phi2? Well, ZB is going to go way up to positive infinity. And since a positive angle is downward for phi2, when phi2 goes up here, in the limit, it becomes negative 90 degrees. So that's how we choose phi1 and phi2 for an infinite line charge. So we go back to our equation for the D field for a finite line charge, and we put in those values for phi1 and phi2. And we work through the math, and that's the expression that we end up with. And so we still see this one over rho dependence. Now, this equation is, of course, a lot simpler than our original equation. And we tend to use this even when we think about finite line charges. We'll assume that the field around the line charge looks like this um, in the vicinity of the line charge. And when we get outside of the line charge, like z values above zb or below za, we'll think of this as being zero. That's not as correct as this first equation, but this equation's a lot simpler and we make that approximation a lot. So we'll use that equation for the infinite line charge to visualize the field around any line charge, whether it's finite or infinite. So it's a bit of approximation, but it does make our life simpler.